What's happening guys? So today I want to talk about diet breaks, what diet breaks are, why we should possibly implement them into our cutting phases and how they can be beneficial to us. And the reason it's on my mind is because I've actually been in a diet break for the last couple of weeks now and I have been cutting for a good four to five months now. And while it has gone fairly well, calories have gotten lower, of course, and naturally that's gonna happen whenever you go through a cutting phase. You know, it's starting to get a little bit worn down. Obviously, I've been hungry, and I just thought it would be beneficial if I could get a little bit of a break from things. And talk to Paul about things, he absolutely agreed, so we went through and, and gave me a diet break. Now, a diet break, a lot of people hear diet break and they think, oh, well, that just means you don't have to worry about it at all, and you can just kind of YOLO it and just have fun. Like, a diet break doesn't mean you don't pay in any attention whatsoever anymore and just, like, binge your face off and, and go nuts and then come back. No, we still want to control it. We want to make sure we don't go off the deep end and undo a bunch of the work that we've already done. It's basically just getting out of a deficit for a while and bringing your calories back to around maintenance, maybe... Also, even including a little bit of a, a cut in your cardio, if you're doing a lot of cardio, then maybe cutting your cardio in half or so, giving the body some recovery and you know, just giving you not only a mental break, but also some potential physiological benefits from it as well. And this was actually shown in research recently. They did a study where they took two different groups. They had one group diet for 16 weeks, just straight through 16 weeks. And then they had another group who died at 16 weeks, but it was with dieting for two weeks and then a two week diet break and then diet for two weeks, two week diet break and then, and then keep going from there. So the whole total time for that second group is 30 weeks with the diet breaks in between but the actual dieting time was 16 weeks just like the other group. And what they found was the group that did the diet breaks saw much better results in those 16 weeks. They saw like 47 percent better fat loss. They saw better muscle retention. They had less weight regain six months post diet. They saw way better results. Now, this can show some benefits to diet breaks because I think what it what it probably does is it helps restore hormones a little bit. It helps keep our metabolic rate from adapting down to the low calories as fast so that we can, you know, continue to lose fat. But we also have to keep in mind with the study is it was a lot longer, all right? So I think would have what would have been fun would be to see what would happen with this study if the, the group that did 16 weeks went the whole 30 and then compared what the difference would have been between the two groups that had the diet breaks and then the one just did 30, 30 weeks of continuous dieting. Probably would have been some dropouts in that because obviously nobody wants to die for 30 weeks straight, but you know what? Like, I just would have been really curious to see like what the difference would have been. But I just wanted to throw that out there because obviously it shows benefits of diet breaks, but at the same time, when we do diet breaks like that, then your, your cutting phase gets, it's gonna drag out a little while. It's gonna, it's gonna take longer, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. It really just kinda depends on what your goals are and what you're trying to accomplish. If you have a deadline that you need to get down to a certain weight for at a certain amount of time, then a bunch of diet breaks is probably not gonna make a whole lot of sense. Maybe one or two here or there, just to kind of keep things going. And, and especially when we get really lean, I think that's when some diet breaks can really make a big difference and actually help you and uh, actually get things going if you do get stalled out. But if you have a long time and, and if you're in no hurry and you're just trying to get some weight off and try to be more comfortable in your own skin and all that type of stuff, well then you can take all the diet breaks you want and you can kind of utilize it however you would like. And uh, I really think there's a lot of benefits to it, both mentally and physiologically. So there's a few ways that you can approach a diet break. And of course, as always, it always kind of depends on what your goals are, as I've just been kind of talking about. But for the person who is in no hurry and just wants to get some weight off and doesn't have deadlines, there's a few ways that we can handle this. Typically, I would start with one week. All right, let's start with a one week diet break and just see how things go. All right, so bring your calories back up to around maintenance. Understand too that maintenance means your new estimated maintenance. We're not talking about what your maintenance level was before you dieted. You have now lost weight, you've been dieting, calories have been lower. You're not gonna be able to maintain on the same amount of weight as when you started. You always have to keep that in mind. Our metabolic rate and our maintenance is a moving target. All right, so it's, it's a little bit of a guessing game, but you can get a rough estimate of what your maintenance calories should be. Bump it up for a week, maybe reduce your, car your cardio a little bit, see where things are by the end of a week. If you have maintained your weight, or especially if you have lost weight, then you might want to extend it out for another week and do two weeks, especially since that study showed two weeks, it just kind of makes sense. Okay, well, let's do two weeks if we can. However, if you find that you're gaining weight and it's just not going very well, maybe you just want to keep it at one week and get back into your dieting phase. If it goes really well and then you do it for a second week and you're still losing or still maintaining, and depending on how you're feeling, maybe you want to go for another week. If I put a client on diet break who is not in like prep or anything like that, if they lose weight, 
I'm always gonna give them another diet break, almost always, all right? So if you lose weight during the diet break, extend the diet break. If they lose weight again, the second diet break, <laughs> let's do it. Let's keep it going as long as we can, right? Like why not take advantage of it? And then when things kind of stall out a little bit or if it starts trending up, now we can go back, bring the calories back down and get things going again. And actually I found what can be really beneficial, especially if somebody kind of reaches a sticking point and they can't lose anymore, rather than just dropping their calories right away, stop, give a diet break, give them a week or two, and then come back and then make the adjustments that I would have made, but do it after the diet break, and then the body really responds well to that, to see that kind of like extra push in, in getting those calories down after a period of having higher calories and making some improvements you know, hormonally and, and metabolically. So you know, there's, there's a million different ways we can do this stuff, but I just think it's really smart to take some diet breaks sometimes. We, we get so caught up sometimes and I just need to go, go, go. I need to be hardcore and I need to push it all the time. And what happens is people just push as hard as they can until they totally burn out and then they, don't, they feel like horrible and they can't keep it up anymore. So what ends up happening is they say, F it, I can't do this anymore. They give up, they go back to their old eating habits, they put all the weight back on and then some. We wanna get away from that kind of behavior. So taking some diet breaks and not pushing yourself into the ground and just forcing it all the time can be very beneficial. We don't have to be perfect and we don't have to push it all the time. So keep that in mind. There's nothing wrong with taking a step back, taking a little bit of a break and giving your body a little bit of a, a recovery period and a chance to, to recuperate and, and just feel better. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Any questions, please let me know and I will talk to you later. Addicted to the love that you're giving Every minute, every day I've been craving